Hi, this is our fourth week of our Advent series on the modern family. I'm Trish Lockburn, Director of Faith Formation here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and I'm joined by our pastor, Father Mark Ressler. And again, this last week, we um, throughout the whole series, we've invited you to join um, in with a group of people, maybe your family, maybe neighbors, um, or maybe just yourself to dive deeper and look a little further into the scriptures from the past Sunday, as well as um, the message that Father Mark gave to us. And so that's what this is for, um, is to help you dive a little bit deeper and continue to grow in your own faith. Um, what we'll do is just provide you with a little bit of a summary of the past weeks, and then um, the one that we just heard on Sunday, Father Mark will recap that a little bit for us, and then I'll provide just a few practical application things and some a scripture for you to ponder as we approach um, the, the, the season of um, Christmas, which is just right around the corner. By the time you're viewing this, it's really close. I hope you have all of your Christmas shopping done. Just kidding. But so with that, as we finish up our, our week and our, our Advent time, um, we hear from Father Mark. Thanks, Trish. Again, we're into our last Sunday of our series, um, four Sundays of Advent. Uh, First Sunday, if you remember way back then, um, November 28th, 29th, that weekend, we talked about families as a sign of love in the world. And the next weekend, we talked about families as preparing the way of the Lord, like John the Baptist did. So families do that through their interaction with one another and to the larger world outside of them. Last weekend, we talked about family as a community of grateful sharing. And finally, this last sun Sunday, the scriptures always um, zero in on, on the birth of Jesus, um, or give us an image of Jesus as a baby, or anticipating his birth, um, because as Trish mentioned, uh, we're almost there, we're almost to, to Christmas itself. So this week we're looking at family as a, as a life-giving community. And one of the things about, um, about Christmas and the birth of Jesus is that uh, it's a reminder how important children are. We have a lot of people that belong to St. E's or join St. E's because they love children. They, they love the babies we have here. They love the little ones that are running around. Uh, there's a lot of, of life and energy that comes from, from young people. And we have a lot of that here. We encourage, encourage it at St. E's. Uh, so we encourage um, all kinds of uh, different groups at St. E's, but we're blessed with having a little bit younger group here, I think, than other parishes in Cedar Rapids here, even in the Archdiocese. And so we take a look at, at, at at Jesus then, and, and the birth of Jesus then, and, and the, the gift of life. Um, life is always seen as, as a gift, and Jesus especially, um, the sign of God's love for us. God so loved, the world, so loved the world, He gave us His only begotten Son. So that kind of, that kind of image of Jesus then. And so the idea being is that um, we are meant to be life givers. Um, one way couples do that, married couples do that, is by bringing life into the world and educating that life. Um, other couples might want to adopt children or act as foster parents in order to be life-giving in a very real sense in terms of children themselves. But there are careers out there that are, are life-giving careers, not just religious life, um, so to speak, but teachers and um, medical people, um, people who do um, social work, um, all, all kinds of occupations out there where the main focus is, is taking care of others, responding to others, um, being life-giving to other people. So Jesus um, and his birth, I think the image is always interesting that he was laid in a wooden trough, this gift of life from God, this newborn life. And at the end of, of his life, then, it was the wood of the cross in which he gave up his life for us then, too. So both of those images of using wood, but in different ways of how Jesus is life-giving for us and coming into the world and giving us the last breath then to bring about our salvation. So we've prepared you, or at least given you some things to think about as we approach Christmas and about how we can be um, life-giving in this world um, and be a light. And I think about my own kids. Uh, they're saying earlier about how they're an example and a sign of God's love. Maybe don't see that every single day, but it gives me another reminder of God's goodness when I do look at them. And at the end of the day when they say, can we say our prayers or whatever, something small that they might say and they smile, that's a huge sign to me of God's love. And it gets me through the day that is not maybe the easiest day. 
And I think back to my, my mother's deceased, but when she, um, before she died, she gave us the gift of faith and the gift of her own witness of her life. And so even though now she is deceased, I look to her as someone as a model of a life giving um, in terms of my faith. Um, she brought my faith to life and, and allowed me um, the gift to be able to make it a personal um, adventure. And I, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be um, making a video with a, you know, a, a priest about the homilies if it wasn't for um, that life-giving example of my mother. So as you prepare for um, Christmas just right around the corner, what is your family bringing um, to Christ this Christmas? Just like you know, when the, the shepherds went to visit, the wise men brought him gifts, what are you bringing? And what is your life bringing um, to other people that, it come, that you come in contact with? We hope and pray that your, your life is one of, that makes other people's lives better. I heard a quote a while back that said, leave people better because of an encounter with you. So that's our hope for you. That's how I feel every time I experience my pastor. So your scripture to ponder this week is from Luke um, chapter 1, verse 42, and it's a familiar one. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So um, Mary's kind of been with us in our videos all, all along, but she, you know, was a, a definitely a life-giving um, tool and instrument for God to come into the world as a human. So may we ask for her intercession as we approach this Christmas time. And again, enjoy your time with your uh, people that you've gathered with throughout this Advent season to share and reflect. And if you're, you've been doing this by yourself, we encourage you and invite you to share your reflections with your family and to grow this Christmas season. That isn't just one day, but how many days is the Christmas season? All the way to uh, February 10th this year, so a long time. Yeah, so you've got time between Chris when Christmas comes to um, January to really just invite Jesus into your home and to make your family better, not only because of this series, but because uh, we appreciate all you are for St. Elizabeth's and, and the world. So don't be afraid to be life-giving. Merry Christmas. You said it early. <laughs>